Every year I feel like I see at least 80 people clamor for a remake of this and a remake of that, and recently I began thinking deeper about why remakes exist and what goals they accomplish within their respective consumer communities. Remakes can be a very strategically smart marketing tool for a bunch of reasons. As a studio made a beloved game that was a huge commercial success over the last console generation, just make it again! For some people, a remake might as well be their second playthrough of the original. Whether or not the remake actually succeeds in capturing the essence of the source material, it'll at least generate some buzz among fans. That said, a good remake should take a beloved classic and bring it to a newer audience, while also adding new features and, most likely, a graphical upgrade of some kind. But of course, this begs the question, how much should you change? For me, a remake has to sort of prove its right to exist. Why exactly should I be playing this? Why did time and resources go into this as opposed to something new? If you go too far in one direction, the remake becomes exactly like the original and brings nothing new to the table other than a quick cash grab. On the other hand, if you change too much, the remake both completely alienates fans of the source material while also losing sight of what made that original what it was. Very few games actually reach these extreme placements I've depicted, but there are some notable examples I would like to touch upon today. Now, when deciding on whether or not to remake a title, you have to account for how old the original title is to begin with. Sometimes remakes don't need to be that old, and can be simple remasters, sporting additional content and quality of life changes. However, when a game worthy of a remake comes out at least a decade ago, that's when a remake would be ripe with potential. And thus, we arrive at a game that had deserved one for a long, long time. Good 23 years after it released as a multi-disc PS1 game, Final Fantasy VII Remake came out a couple months ago and was met with, uh, I don't know, it's, there's, there's some hype I guess. <laughs> a game like FF7 is often cited as a classic of the genre, so a remake is very much warranted. Since it came out so long ago, you really don't need to change a whole lot overall. A graphical upgrade is really all you need to get things rolling. But the devs at Square took things further and completely revamped the combat for reasons I will never understand. This was a risky move, but it ended up being a good mix of the original's more strategic approach and a more action-oriented gameplay that a new game would support. The problem here, however, lies with the story and, by extension, its pacing. For whatever reason, the remake's story covers 50 hours of content that was only 5 hours of an opening area in the original. This and the addition of key plot changes is where we arrive at something I very creatively dubbed the remake paradox. Old players who wanted to experience the game again are forced to deal with these stuffy, uninspired filler moments, and the plot details that would entice them are completely lost on the newer players, since the game never bothers to explain their significance in the first place. I can't say I'd expected much from Tetsuya Nomura of all people, the guy who acid tripped the entire Kingdom Hearts storyline but it leaves a sad little fracture in this new take on an old classic. Now, the age of a game like Final Fantasy VII has a part in whether or not it gets remade, but what if I were to tell you that you can have an older game get remade, change even less, and completely remove the remake paradox? In hindsight, I actually owe this game a great deal of respect since it reminded me that you can always follow up a dog shit with some quality. Fire Emblem Echoes is based off of Fire Emblem Gaiden, the second game in the series that came out on the SNES in 1992. Nothing about this game was classic at all, hell half the fanbase forgot it even existed. And even so, Echoes proves that we should never forget our history. Even being the oddball that it is in terms of mechanics, Echoes brings a lot to the table and is even the first game in the series to be almost fully voice acted. The game is scaled up to a beautiful new res on the 3DS compared to its original home on the SNES. In addition, it also embraces the original's little one-off features, such as dungeon exploration of all things. And that's really the great thing about Echoes, aside from a few minor plot details, not a lot changes. The sad thing is though, even with all this stuff that remained surprisingly enough the same as it should have been, Echoes could have seriously changed one thing in particular, that being the map design. 
they actually stayed a little too faithful to a game that came out almost 30 years ago. Go figure. Like, come on, there's this map where there's just one guy chilling on the boat, and then, uh, and then he, uh, <laughs> Like, come on, how do you make worse map design than Fire Emblem Fates? I didn't even think that was possible. Everyone always says that Celica's path is worse because she's stuck with all the bad terrain, but Ohm has some madness to deal with, too. Like this piece of shit. I have to funnel my units into these tiny passages while snipers fire on them from both sides. It's absolute garbage. What kind of orangutans designed this? Maybe the same guy who did this. So now we have a game that changes too little? Where the hell do we meet here? Even the middle of the spectrum doesn't even seem all that great. Like, is there any sort of balance to be struck? How do you even- Oh, the original three Resident Evil games are an absolute chore to play. These whack-ass controls are made only worse by these absolutely horrible doorway transitions. Now, while all three of these titles were remade, only the second one really seemed to get it right. It's amazing how well the evolution of just basic control schemes and processing power can do for a game like RE2. These stupid, just obnoxious fixed camera angles of the original have been completely obliterated, and the player has been given much more visual clarity as to what the enemies are doing, and in turn, what they should do in response. The graphical upgrade creates these scarier, more tense, impactful moments, each generating their own unique brand of PTSD. Were those transitions in the old one too lengthy for you? Well congratulations, you get to open doors like a normal person now. And of course, the remake happily provides some great menus for you. Mapping out the sprawling hallways of these zombie infested environments is now so much easier and lets the player focus on what the genre is meant to be about, scaring the absolute shit out of you. Oh, and there's this little secret where you can play as a block of tofu, and when the zombies bite you there are chunks of missing from the block. That, that, that's a 5 out of 5 right there. Nowadays, remakes are a lot more common, both in how many come out at any given time and how many are asked for. That one Spongebob game from the GameCube got one so they could make that meme. Tony Hawk is finally great again. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon started to shovel up my childhood. Things are looking pretty good. Not all of them are winners, but the ones that are feel like worthy investments, and there will for sure be more on the horizon. What kind of place is this?